Hello, welcome back to Proactive New York. I'm Christine Carrado. With me right now is Nader Porhassan, CEO at Cytodyne. Nader, great to see you as always. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Christine. Now, there are lots to talk about today. Let's first talk about how you've announced plans to work with the Mexican National Institute of Health for a trial on onlorolumab for coronavirus patients. Um, what is kind of uh, what does the country of Mexico look like right now in terms of how coronavirus is is affecting it? So it's pretty bad that Dr. Gustavo Tran uh, told me he's like equivalent to Anthony Fauci of uh, United States. He told us that the situation over there is pretty bad also, and they want to move very quickly. We just talked uh, this morning again via email, and we said that we want to move this very quickly. They agree. They are very impressed with our emergency IND results. They don't think these anecdotal uh, data should be ignored. So they're going to use that also in conjunction with a very small, quick trial over there for critical patients and hopefully get approval. Well, how quick could a trial be? What are kind of what is the regulatory protocols in Mexico look like compared to the FDA? So it's similar, but it's uh, perhaps a little bit more relaxed and perhaps they can move a little bit quicker than the FDA in the United States. I don't have a lot of experience with them, but that's what I've been hearing. So we'll see what happens. We are moving as fast as we can right now. We, we've got the CDA already sent to them confidentiality disclosure agreement and they signed it. And every the protocol we have is already the same protocol. We're going to send it with a smaller number of patients. They will translate that and immediately submit it to their, to their FDA. So what's, what's kind of the latest information from the trials here in the U.S.? What's, have you begun enroll, enrolling that 75 patient trial yet? So the, a lot of people are asking, why is it taking so long? Why did I say at the very beginning, April 6th, we started this six weeks ago, and we thought we we're going to be enrolling in one to two weeks because the only site we had, which was a very important site, told us that they have more than 100 patients and they could get those injected within a couple of weeks. Well, that didn't happen, but we enrolled other sites. And the problem is the getting a site, you know, you have to sign the CDA first, which has to go through the legal. And then you have to have site qualification, feasibility assessment. Then you have to have budget and contracts all negotiated with the institution. Then you have to have the legal review for all the insurance. Then you have to have IRB institutional review board. You have to have pharmacy randomization for double blind uh, procedure to be put in place. Drug labels has to be done. Site initial visitation, training of principal investigators, sub PI, nurses, pharmacists. I mean, the list goes on and on, and people think that sometimes this is just a simple thing. For a small company like ours, we're moving very fast, and being at 45 and 32 patients for other trials, that's pretty good. And meanwhile, we're giving the drug to every emergency IND that we have. But this emergency IND, I just want to read one uh, quick email that I got from one of the hospitals, and these anecdotal data are really touching, every, should touch everybody's heart. The uh, email says Dr. Dodi, Dr. Kush Dodi is the director of our clinical trial. Uh, they addressed him and said, I am pleased to inform you that patient number one has been discharged to a skilled nursing facility today. She had been hospitalized since April 12th. Patient number two, there's only three patients in this, in this hospital. Patient number two is very close to being removed from the ventilator and has a tericheostomy and PEC tube. He is alert and oriented to person, place, and time and enjoys speaking to his family on FaceTime, especially his granddaughter. Patient number three, likely discharged soon. Now that's just one hospital. This is 60 patients, 29 patients in the, and one of the hospitals that we have uh, in Southern California is uh, having, uh, you know, less than 20% death rate in the critical population and severe population. That, the, the rate of death in those populations is 80% best case scenario. We have 20%. I mean, these data are really amazing. So what does it, why do we think we're going to really crush the primary endpoint, in our opinion, is because the patients that we took in Montefiore Hospital, we got their blood sample day 0, 3, 7, 14, and if they stayed alive, even longer. That blood sample on all of them showed immunological benefit, the RAND T's dropped, which is CCL5, which relates to CCR5. So we have, we have data. We have data that shows that we are going to be successful with this trial, and we are excited to get to the end. End of May, hopefully we get to 75, and two weeks later, we will let the world know the results. 
So do you, so what stage are you at right now in enrollment? Cause you listed all of those stages. So we have six sites and four other sites are being registered. So if we get all of those moving, getting three patients per site in the next one week or 10 days is very feasible. And the six sites are already gone. They are ready to enroll patients. Um, you know, we, we have other items in our uh, you know, agenda that we are doing very well. For example, our cancer trial, we had 10 patients or so in basket trial that was waiting because of not being able to travel. They're gonna be injected in the next 30 days. Six of them already passed the, the qualification. We're also starting a basket trial for 20 to 30 patients in Taiwan. That's where our CRO has a branch. That could go very well fast. So we are waiting for meeting with FDA for uh, inter interim, I mean, a preliminary breakthrough designation meeting for our breakthrough designation. Things that we have with the BLA already submitted is quite a bit of stuff we have. And this uh, company, in my opinion, gonna see quite a bit of appreciation in the value that it has. Yep, we'll look forward to hearing more about that. You do have so much going on. Um, great to speak with you, Nader. Hope to catch up with you soon. Thank you for having me, appreciate it.